Morning, everyone. Morning. What a glorious day. What a great day. We're going to praise God. So, children, it's ready. Are you ready to dance? Yeah. Everybody, are you ready to dance? Yeah. It's party. Are you ready to sing? Yeah. Yes. Are we ready to clap? Have we got some words? I think we've got some words. I think you'll know this one.
worship you alone. Wonderful. Welcome everybody to our Easter Day celebration. Happy Easter to all of you. Uh, just one or two things as we get underway. It's Easter, so we're celebrating the most significant events that have changed the world, so we've got good reason to be joyful. We're celebrating baptisms because Jason and Jasmine are being baptised, and then together with Sophie and Anna, they're going to be receiving communion for the first time. So we've got lots of reasons to celebrate there as well um, as we welcome them uh, to be part of the uh, church family uh, sharing in communion, so that's all good to celebrate. It's great to welcome you if you're visiting. Um, you're really welcome. If when it comes to communion, you're used to receiving communion in your own church, you can come and do that. Uh, here, if you prefer just to come forward for a short blessing, please uh, do just come forward uh, at, the, at the time when uh, you're invited to, and I'll just pray a short prayer of blessing uh, to you. We're welcoming not only those of you who are in the building today, but those who are joining us on YouTube. And a special hi to uh, Lindy's twin sister, Jude, uh, Sophie's auntie, who would want to be here, but unfortunately has come down with COVID. Like many others, COVID is still interfering with, uh, with normal service. But Jude, we hope you are able to join in and to participate as uh, Sophie uh, received communion for the first time, but welcome to all of you on YouTube as well. And just uh, one final thing, during our opening songs, um, those of you that have brought uh, flowers along, we're going to um, place those on the cross, so that hopefully by the time we finish, the cross has changed from a bare wooden cross to one that's uh, covered in bright symbols of life as we celebrate Jesus' resurrection today. So um, as we uh, start singing, please feel free just to come forward and there'll be a, a few people at the front just to help you place those uh, onto the cross as we get going. So would you like to stand? So, hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And we do everything three times. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. So we sing together. Jesus Christ is risen today. Or Christ the Lord is risen today.
when the life flowed from his body. It seemed like Jesus' mission failed, but the sacrifice of
disciples were gathered together in one place and Jesus came and he stood among them and he said peace be with you and this time Thomas was with them and he said as he fell on his knees my Lord and my God Jesus risen Jesus come now and be present among your disciples Holy Spirit fill this place with the glory of the risen Jesus as we enthrone as King Jesus we enthrone So, Lord, we welcome you into our midst. On this Easter day, when we celebrate together your rising from the dead, and we acknowledge your risen presence among us here, fill our hearts afresh with uh, joy and hope and peace, we pray as we acclaim you, Lord and God. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. So would you like to be seated? Um, we're going to uh, now come to baptism. We're going to uh, baptise Jason and uh, Jasmine. So I'm going to ask them to come out uh, to the front here and uh, perhaps to come with um, mum and dad and uh, sponsors as well if they'd like to come out. So I'll get Jason and Jasmine just if you'd stand here. And then, and we'll, we'll have some supporters. Do you want supporters? Yeah, you do. You want supporters. So you're going to face everybody out that way. That's it. Look that way. Brilliant. Fantastic. So I'm going to ask you a question in a moment. Okay, the only answer you can give to this question, because uh, we've spent quite a bit of time preparing this, is I do. Okay? So the two of you, Jasmine, Jason, when I ask you this question, you've got to say it really loudly. I'll hold a mic just in case. Is that all right? So can I ask you, Jason and Jasmine, do you wish to be baptised? Yes! I do! <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> Brilliant. Total enthusiasm. Who cares about the liturgy? If, if someone's enthusiastic. I, I blame the people who prepared you. But I love that. I think that's great. So we remind ourselves on occasions like this that faith is the gift of God to his people. And in baptism, the Lord is adding to our number those whom he is calling. And so I'm asking all of you, people of God, will you welcome Jason and Jasmine and uphold them in their new life in Christ? With the help of God, we will. And so in baptism, God calls us out of darkness into his marvellous light. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life with him. Therefore, I ask, 
And if you like, your sponsors can join in with you here as well. Do you turn to Christ as Saviour? You can. Do you repent of your sins? Do you renounce evil? So I'm going to sign you now on uh, your foreheads with the sign of the cross, the sign of Christ uh, crucified. This isn't you being baptised, this is just a reminder that you are setting out to follow Jesus Christ. And so uh, you follow the one who laid his life down on a cross. So, Jasmine, Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of the cross. And Jason, Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of the cross. And so we say, do not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified. Fight valiantly as a disciple of Christ against sin, the world and the devil. And remain faithful to Christ to the end of your life. So Jason and Jasmine, may Almighty God deliver you from the powers of darkness, restore in you the image of his glory and lead you in the light and the obedience of Christ. Amen. Amen. And so we're going to uh, pray as you stand here. We're going to pray uh, over the water in the font. We use water without the wasp um, <laughs> as a symbol of washing, of cleansing, of new life and strangely enough although we haven't got enough water in here because we'd push you right underneath it if we did um, of burial of death so that as uh, if we had enough water you were pushed down under water and came out again we're saying goodbye to an old way of life and hello to a new way greeting new life so water symbolizes all of those things and this prayer um, the children have helped put together as we pray uh, so there are some responses all of us can join in with. And then a prayer which tells something of the story of the God who loves us and who uh, comes to rescue us. And so these words have been put together uh, by our children. So praise God who made heaven and earth, who keeps his promise forever. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Dear God, thank you for the water that helps us survive. From the very beginning, your Holy Spirit moved over the water, which made us really happy. Moses led your people through the Red Sea to the Promised Land. Jesus was baptised in water and blessed by your Holy Spirit as your promised Son to lead us from death to life. Lord of life, renew your creation. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. And in the water, we remember Jesus dying for us and taking our sins away. Going under the water, we join with Christ in his death and rise to new life in his resurrection. Because of the water, we are reborn by your Holy Spirit. And therefore, in joyful obedience, we baptize into his family. Jason and Jasmine, who come to know and follow Jesus. Lord of life, renew your creation. And so may the power of your Holy Spirit now bless this water, and wash away sin and bring with it new life. Help us to be like your son, Jesus Christ, and to walk his risen life and light forever. Jesus Christ our Lord and your Holy Spirit will be given great glory and respect today and always. Amen. Lord of life, renew your creation. So I'm going to invite us all to stand as we uh, declare faith together with Jason and with Jasmine. Brothers and sisters, I ask you then to profess together with Jason and Jasmine the faith of the church. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, 
his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So now we come to this really important moment where you're about to take an early bath and be baptized. We're doing you first, Jasmine. Do you think that's a good idea? You do. And it's just Jasmine. Ladies first. That's very, very good of you. So is it just Jasmine? You don't have any middle name, do we? Just Jasmine. Yeah. Right. You want to put your head right over. Are you ready? I'm going to use as much water as I can get, okay? Here we go. Jasmine, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And we all say together, Amen. Amen. There we go. Okay. And we'll let you step back and we'll get, uh, we'll get Jason to come in as well. Jason, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There we go. Aren't you glad that we didn't have the big pool? Because <laughs> we would. So let's give them a big round of applause. And so, Jason and Jasmine, may God, who has received you by baptism into his church, pour on you the riches of his grace, that within the company of Christ's pilgrim people, you may daily be renewed by his anointing spirit and come to the inheritance of the saints in glory. And may you, as you grow up, continue to go deeper into your walk with Jesus. May you learn what it means to follow him, and to speak of him and to live for him. May you be encouraged by your parents and by those around you who are also learning what it is to follow Jesus together. May you be supported by all of us in your church family as together we seek to follow the one who is the risen, ascended Lord of all. Amen. And so we remind ourselves there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. Jason and Jasmine, we welcome you into the fellowship of faith. We are children of the same Heavenly Father. We welcome you. And so lighting these uh, baptismal candles from uh, the Paschal candle, which we lit this morning for those deeply faithful people who joined Elaine and I at 5.30 to greet the dawn, celebrate the resurrection, followed by breakfast. You all missed on that one. So we're going to get uh, Sophie and Anna, who are also receiving communion uh, today for the first time to present these candles to, ja uh, to Jasmine and to Jason. We remind ourselves that God has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and has given us a place with the saints in light. Jason and Jasmine, you have received the light of Christ. Walk in this light all the days of your life. Shine as a light in the world to the glory of God the Father. Brilliant. I'll give you one last clap and we'll let you go back to your seat. And uh, just in case you were feeling left out.
Is anyone feeling left out because... <laughs> Anne. Anne's feeling left out. <laughs> Lift you out. Brilliant. What? And it is fun, but it's also serious because it's a reminder for those of us who have been baptised, uh, as the water from the font fell on us, we're being reminded <laughs> of our own baptismal promises, either the ones that were made by our parents and our godparents on our behalf if we were baptised as an infant, or the promises that we made as an adult if we came to faith uh, later, it's a reminder of our own baptism. And it's also a reminder for those perhaps here this morning who aren't quite sure about all this Easter stuff, that God's love is for everybody. It doesn't matter who you are, what age you are, where you are, what you think, God loves you. And so as the water fell on you this morning, it's a reminder of the amazing, indiscriminate love of God for each one of us. And that's a good thing to celebrate, isn't it? Hallelujah, Christ is risen. I risen indeed. Hallelujah. So let's just be seated for a moment of stillness. And I'm going to, in a moment, just after a few moments of quiet, going to pray uh, the prayer that joins us with many other Christians around uh, the Church of God on this Easter Day. It's called the Collect. I'm going to pray that in just a few moments. But let's just be still and think of the God who loves us, the Lord who is risen from the dead. God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned, and the way to life stands open in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so our children now are going to come up and uh, bring us our gospel reading for this Easter day. Very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb carrying the spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the entrance to the body. So they went in, but they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. They stood there, puzzled about this, when suddenly two men in bright, shining clothes stood by them. Full of fear, the women bowed down to the ground as the men said to them, Why are you looking among the dead for one who is alive? He is not here. He has been raised. Remember what he said to you while he was in Galilee? The Son of Man must be handed over to sinners, be crucified, and three days later rise to life. Then the women remembered his words, returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven disciples and all the rest. The women were Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary the mother of James. They and the other women with them told these things to the apostles. But the apostles thought that what the women said was nonsense, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. He bent down and saw the linen wrappings, but nothing else. Then he went back home and amazed at what had happened. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Sophie. And Anna. <laughs> so this is an amazing day. It is the day that we celebrate uh, the events that changed the world. And we might like to think that because of what happened on Easter Day, that nothing is impossible from now on. 
Nothing is impossible from now on because the impossible has happened and Jesus has risen from the dead. But if we think about Easter, the story as we lead up to Easter starts not with joy and celebration. It starts as we go through the week of events that lead up to Easter weekend with the sorrow, the despair, the hopelessness that those who are following Jesus felt. And even on that first Easter day, what was still going on amongst those who were following Jesus was weeping as they just cried at the loss of all their hopes. Everything they looked forward to had been taken away, it seemed, as Jesus died on the cross. When the women and those disciples got to the tomb to start with, they were not expecting any more than we would have been that there would have been someone alive. They were expecting to find the dead Jesus whom they loved. And they were grief-stricken. They were weeping. Everything had been snatched away. And the Easter story speaks into our world today, doesn't it? There are so many people around the world today who are weeping at the loss of all their hopes, everything that they looked forward to, at the loss of everything that they've loved. Think of the people in Ukraine, some of these pictures of the terrible, terrible devastation that's taken place in Ukraine, that's taking place right now on this Easter day as we gather to celebrate. They're weeping at the loss of their homes, their hopes, the fear that they're going to lose their whole country. Their possessions are now just a couple of plastic bags as they walk around, having lost everything. They're weeping for the loss of everything. That's an Easter emotion. The Easter story is not just a 2,000 year old story. It's a story that speaks to us today because we live in a broken world where hopes get dashed, where we lose everything. And there are so many. There may be some here today who've made it here to church but still feel that there's things that make them feel heavy hearted. There may be people that you've lost in the last two years and you still carry grief in your heart. You feel more like weeping than shouting hallelujah Christ is risen. Weeping is an emotion that we feel at Easter. But the great story of Easter is that weeping turns to wonder. And so Mary, when she arrives at the tomb, she's weeping to start with. She's expecting to just finish off doing what she needed to, to make Jesus' burial complete. And then she discovers an empty tomb. She's filled with wonder. That's the, the, the discovery that Christians find on Easter Day. It's the wonder because it is an amazing thing. We, we know that dead people don't rise. They knew dead people don't rise. But Jesus did. The tomb was empty. His body was not there. He's risen. And Mary, as she tries to come to terms with that, those first followers of Jesus, as they try to come to terms with that, are full of wonder. If we sit here today and it doesn't make us full of wonder, celebrating the Easter resurrection, we've lost something. It is wonderful. Hope begins to emerge again. It doesn't happen all at once. It takes time. Here's the amazing thing in Ukraine. There are Christians in the midst of all the devastation who are filled with wonder and holding on to hope because of their faith. Those pictures that you can see there, carrying a cross in the midst of all of the carnage of the war because they're holding on to the wonder of the fact that because of Jesus' resurrection, what's going on around them is not the last word. It is not the last word. The wonder is, the last word is a risen Jesus, alive today, who we can know, a God who loves us, God who's promised one day to restore and renew everything. It's why we pray in the baptismal prayer, Lord of life, renew your creation. Because we believe one day he will. And we get a glimpse of it. Believe it or not, Jasmine and Jason, you're part of it. You're part of God's renewed creation. Everyone who's got faith, you're part of God's renewed creation. Young and old alike. We're caught up in the wonder of an empty tomb of a risen Lord. And hope breaks out in the midst of brokenness. Wonder. From weeping to wonder. That's part of the Easter story and it speaks to us today. Not just 2,000 years ago. 
It's relevant for us today. People desperately need hope and purpose, the knowledge of a God who loves them, and that everything is heading one day to restoration when pain and sickness and suffering, and people like Judah are sick to death of being sick to death of COVID, can be with the people that they love, and there is no more disease, suffering, struggle. That's where we're heading. Easter story matters today. And we surely, as those who do have faith, don't want to keep that to ourselves, do we? You don't sound convinced. Do we want to keep this to ourselves? We've moved from weeping through wonder to become those who are called to witness. Weeping, wonder, witness. It's always good to have words or three things to remember. Weeping, wonder, witness. All of us who've come to faith, Jason and Jasmine, who've been baptized today, now, whether they like it or not, and hopefully they do, they are witnesses. I am a witness. Lindy is a witness. Sophie is a witness. Kevin is a witness. Just because he was looking at his wife, not at me. Beryl's a witness. Hillary is a witness. You are witnesses. You may be, you may feel like you are, if you're like me, the most useless witness going. But we are witnesses to the greatest piece of good news that there is in this world, in the universe. That death is not the end, that Jesus Christ is alive, that new creation has started and will one day come in all its fullness. And in the middle of devastation in Ukraine, that's what Christians are holding on to, witnessing to their neighbours and friends too. Today, in the midst of bombing and shelling and loss, they're bearing witness to what we celebrate today, that Jesus Christ is alive and risen, and there's a God who loves them and who one day will set right all that's broken. Isn't that good news for all of us? For us here in Wollaton, for people in Ukraine, for people across the world. That's what we want, isn't it, at Easter? Yeah. So that we're not just shouting useless words, just making ourselves feel quite happy. We're celebrating the truth that changes everything. So here's all we need to remember at Easter. This is the journey that carries on for all of us, from weeping to wonder to witness so that all of us can rejoice that Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Brilliant. That is good news. So we'll continue to celebrate that as we uh, carry on through this Easter celebration. And we're going to respond uh, in worship before our children lead us in prayer. So shall we stand? And we're going to sing uh, together in Christ. All right. In Christ alone. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my life, my strength, my song.
light of the world by darkness and bursting forth on your stay from the great he was again and as he stands in victory since curse has lost its faith on me for I am his are going to come up and get into place for uh, leading the prayers and just as we begin in prayer if you'd like to be seated I'm going to uh, begin by reading some bands of marriage and then we'll pray uh, for those who are preparing for their wedding days before we're led in prayer by uh, our children so I publish the bands of marriage between Philip Graham Whitby, the parish of St. Helens Stapleford, and Alison Francesca Woodward of this parish. This is for the second time of asking. And between James Gerard Murphy and Stacey Ann Francis Share, both of this parish. Between Gregory Stephen Tomlinson and Sarah Louise Beebe, both of this parish between Gary Derek Peter Summers and Rosemary Audrey Breckles, both of this parish, and between Jordan Paul Craven and Lucy Rebecca Fox, also both of this parish. These four couples are all for the third time of asking. So if any of you knows any reason in law why they may not marry each other, you are to declare it. Let's pray for these couples then as they continue their journey towards their wedding days and prepare for married life. Lord, we thank you for Philip and Alison, James, Stacy, Gregory and Sarah, Gary and Rosemary, Jordan and Lucy. We pray for them that you will continue to lead them, to deepen their love for one another and reveal to them your love for them. May their lives together be full of joy. May they be those who encourage one another and whose love overflows to those around them. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear God, thank you for your lovely world and the life we have, thanks to your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for being kind and making kind people who protect us and especially those who are helping to protect Ukraine. Thank you for families and that we can feel safe here in England. Help the people of Ukraine to feel safe and be safe. Thank you for the strong people in the world who are protecting Ukraine. Thank you for, thank, 
Thank you to those who are serving you and spend their time caring for others. We pray everyone in the world can love each other the way you love us and in then we'll come to the war. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Dear Lord God, who made and loves the world, help the Ukrainian people, their teachers, their emergency services, and their leaders. And their leaders. Fill them with your love so that they stay strong and never doubt you through these awful times. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God Almighty, you created absolutely everything. Nothing happens without your will. At this moment, people in the Ukraine suffer, and we don't understand why you allow it. Please, help us to have faith in you, to trust that you know best, that your love is with us always. Love in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Dear God, Thank you that we live in a safe country with peace and freedom. In this time of uncertainty, we pray especially for Ukraine as they face a time of violence and war. Help the leaders of Ukraine to make wise decisions and keep the people safe. We are so lucky to be in a stable country, so give our leaders the compassion to help Ukraine and support its people in this crisis. We also ask for you to enable President Putin to realize the impact of his actions and find a way to respond peacefully. On this Easter Sunday of new beginnings and hope, help the people of Ukraine to continue persevering with hope to rebuild their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Now let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our, our Father in heaven, in heaven, hallowed be your name. Amen. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Give us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So I'm going to ask uh, the four of you just to stay there, because we're going to... Um, formally admit you uh, to communion so that as we come to communion later in the service uh, just a little while that you're ready to join in so there are going to be some words they'll appear up there and down here so let me get this out of the way so I'm going to ask uh, both them uh, and us some questions and we remind ourselves that as members of Christ's family through baptism we share in the story of God's love for the world, God's love in Christ calling us to himself, God's love in the spirit giving strength for our journey of faith. And we celebrate this love in word and song. We feed on Jesus in bread and wine and make him known through our life together. And so Sophie, Jasmine, Jason and Anna Today is an important stage in your Christian journey. We welcome you as you come to receive Holy Communion. So I'm going to ask you this question. Do you wish to be admitted to Holy Communion and to share regularly in this meal? Yes. yes. And so to all of us here gathered, will you help Sophie and Jasmine, Jason and Anna to grow in faith and come to confirmation. Amen. Will you welcome them as communicant members of Christ's family and support them with your friendship and your prayers? Amen. So in the name of the Bishop of Sutherland, Nottingham and St. Leonard's Church, I welcome you to the sacrament of Holy Communion. May God bless you as you continue with us on your journey of faith. May you not only know God's blessing, but may God's blessings flow from you to others. May you be those whose lives show grace and mercy and love and compassion as you grow up. May you show that to your friends, to your family and to your neighbours. 
all the days of your life. Amen. So, would you all like to stand? And we're going to uh, share the peace in a moment. The slight, slight hesitation that we do all feel at the moment, you might feel you can bump elbows or just turn to one another and share the words of the peace. But let's uh, do that together. Reminding ourselves that the risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and he said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And also with you. Hallelujah. Let's offer one another a sign of peace. So we're going to uh, sing together this uh, commitment to faith. I believe in Jesus. Is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
is always right to give you thanks. You created the universe where all living things reflect your glory. You give us this great and beautiful earth to discover and to cherish. You give us happy times and things to celebrate. In these we taste your kingdom, a feast for all your children. You made us all each wonderfully different to join with the angels and sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna on the highest. We thank you, loving Father, because when we turned away, you sent Jesus, your Son. He gave his life for us on the cross and shows us the way to live. Send your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us Christ's body and his blood. On the night before he died, when darkness had fallen, Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, broke it and shared it with his disciples, saying, this is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. After they had eaten, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and shared it with his disciples, saying, this is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. So, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate his love, his death, his risen life. As you feed us with these gifts, send your Holy Spirit and change us more and more to be like Jesus, our Saviour. Help us, Father, to love one another as we look forward to that day when suffering is ended and all creation is gathered in your loving arms. And now with all your saints, we give you glory through Jesus Christ in the strength of the Spirit, today and forever. Amen. We sit as we continue to pray. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Lord, our hearts hunger for you. Give us this bread always. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. So just a reminder... If you uh, would receive communion in a church where you worship God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you love Jesus as your risen Saviour, then please feel free to come and receive uh, bread and wine today. And if you would prefer simply to come forward for a blessing, uh, please do that as the uh, sides people ask you to come forward.
so God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm just going to ask uh, Sophie and Anna and Jason and Jasmine to reappear at the front, if they could. And uh, we'll get these in the right order. Hopefully. Sophie. So this Bible we're giving to you, and we pray that you will learn to love the Lord who you find in the stories and in the pages of the Bible. And this is for Anna. And we pray the same for you as well. And Jasmine. And this one, you can't possibly leave this one lying there, can you? Because it looks so good. You've got to pick this one up and read it. And hope that, uh, and pray that it changes your life. And Jason as well, can't leave these. So we pray that you will continue, all of you, to keep reading, learning more about the God who loves you. And learning how to follow him uh, faithfully together. And I think we should also not only um, give uh, Anna and Jason and Jasmine and Sophie a clap, but also Lindy and Sally who have uh, helped prepare them. And they also prepared the... The uh, rather colourful altar hangings, why we've got it there, it's not liturgically correct, but who cares? It's bright and it's colourful, and our children put it together. So let's give them all a round of applause, shall we? <laughs> Wonderful, let you go back. We're going to join together. Uh, in a moment in our closing hymn, but just a reminder that those of you who've been waiting for this moment, and I'm one of them, uh, immediately after the service, there is an Easter egg hunt. I can see many of the older adults getting very excited about this possibility. But please don't go finding the eggs before the children have. Okay, I've already got mine. I've, I've cheated. Um, if you want to take part in the Easter egg hunt, you need to go out of this door, the front on the left, and uh, you will be given some instructions. The, the only real instruction that matters is you find as many eggs as you can but under no circumstances begin eating them. Okay? You've got to bring them all back because we have this wonderful principle of loving and sharing. So you find as many as you can, but then you all come back and we'll share them out equally. So, so you see, out of the abundance of some, the lack of others uh, is satisfied. And that's a good Christian principle. Okay? So Easter egg hunt immediately after the service and refreshments of all sorts for those who can stay uh, to just talk with one another and share on this Easter day. Let's stand, shall we? We're going to sing together, Thine be the glory.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And so God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. And God the Holy, God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. And God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all those whom you love and pray for this Easter day and always. Amen. So, he is not here. He is risen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. In the name of Christ, Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia.